Welcome to Specific Love. Today I'm going to show you how I used a couple pallets to store some of my firewood into an awesome mobile shelf. Let's begin. In preparation of preparing some firewood for next year, I've been trying to chop some wood, but I've also been having some issues. Our new dog, I love Lincoln, but he has a tendency to grab some of the wood and run off and, well, chew on it. Also, in the area that I keep it in is under a large metal shed, which has a tendency to stay wet whenever it rains, and so this drying process of trying to prep this wood for next year can take a long time. So we're gonna solve this issue by taking a stash of pallets that I still have, we're gonna break these down, and we create a nice heavy duty wood shelf holder so that not only can it store the wood for drying, I'm gonna have it on casters so it can move around. Now the pallets I'm gonna be using, these are the heavy duty version. It comes with eight pieces of wood down both sides and four down the center. So this is a little bit more wood than your standard pallet. So if you're gonna use a regular pallet, you're probably gonna need three or four of them, where in my case, I should only need two of these. I first started cutting the wood pallets with a reciprocating saw. This will still leave the nails embedded in the wood, so be careful when cutting or drilling, but it should not hurt the project. Now that we have all the pallets broken down, it's a good idea to go through all the pieces. You're just looking to pick out the best ones. Of course, they don't have to be perfect. You're not worried about them if they're a little dirty on one side and clean on the other, however that is. You mainly just want to go through and make sure there aren't any major cracks or major breaks in the wood. Set those to the side, and those are the ones you'll be using. Now if you happen to be going through all your pieces and you find some that maybe have concrete or some kind of material embedded in it, it could probably use a little bit of sanding, but again, this is just gonna be outside. You're not worried about it looking beautiful. You just want it to be functional. Now here's an example of how this is going to be going together. I just got some scrap hid here to show you. The two by fours are gonna be going on the sides. It'll be the side supports and the legs, and the thinner pieces of wood we're gonna have doubled up. In between the two bys will be the shelving. Now to make this process move a little quicker, I set up the squareness of the first set of wood and then using some tape, I created an outline of the first set. This allowed me to quickly place down the next two sets for quick assembly. This is a great process to use if you need pieces that do not have to have exact measurements. For each of these, I used some glue and screws for strength. Once each set was secure, it was time to attach them together. Now once you get all three sections ready, it's now time to mate them together. But don't be surprised if they don't fit flush. In fact, I can almost guarantee you they won't fit flush. Because, well, one, you're just doing rough estimates until you're dealing with pallet wood. And usually isn't all that straight. But just also remember you're going to be putting firewood for storage on this and the chances of your firewood actually being straight itself is going to be extremely rare. So a little bit of wobble, no big deal. Now to help hold the sections together, I used some glue between each of them and added a few clamps. I also added a few screws on the ends of each for extra security. Now after I have all three sections put together, it looks a little bit narrow to me and I don't want it to be too unstable. I do have enough wood to do one more section, so I'm going to do that. Now that I have all the main supports glued and screwed in place, I decided I'm going to put a backing on this with some of the extra wood I still have. Now keep in mind, all this wood here is still from those two original pallets. So if you can find those heavy duty pallets, you get a lot of wood. So let's put these on the back. This assembly is pretty straightforward. I just eyeballed the measurements between each of the boards and then put down a layer of glue and screwed each of them in place. You can be more specific if you would like to make sure each of these is exactly the same. But for me, since this is for firewood, it was of little concern. Now I'm sure some of you are probably wondering why I'm not completely cleaning off the area where I'm putting the glue. I'm just using the glue as a little extra. The screw should hold everything plenty stiff, but I figure if the glue can for some reason give it a little extra grip even through all the dirt and grime, it's worth it. I now have the bottom of the whole cart facing upward because I want to work on it for a moment. I want to put a couple pieces of wood across the bottom here that not only will help secure all these pieces so there's zero chance of them moving around, but it'll also give a nice firm place. I want to put some casters on here so that'll give a nice firm grip and that way I don't have to worry about the casters eventually coming out. So I took a rough measurement and headed to the miter saw to trim down the base plates. I then glued and screwed them in place. Now for the bottom of this, I'm gonna be using some casters. These are actually some old casters. I got taken off some old, uh, I think it was some old equipment that I was trashing. 
or something along those lines. Anytime you're going to be trashing where there's furniture or equipment and it's just going to be going to the wayside, make sure you take off all the wheels and casters because you never know, you can use them in the future. And to hold each of the casters, I used some two and a half inch screws with washers. I then flipped the entire cart over and tested out its mobility. Now one thing to keep in mind is when you're putting this together and you flip it over on the wheels, there's a chance that one of the wheels isn't going to touch the ground. For example, on mine, one of them is not. Now, if it's just a little tiny gap, no worry, once you put all the weight of the wood in it, it's going to flatten itself out. If it happens to be a decent sized gap, you may want to flip it back over, take the caster off, add a little bit of a shim, and reattach everything. Now for the roof, I had six pieces left over, and I have glued them at a right angle up in the corner. Now I'm going to put these on the roof and see how we can measure it out to make sure it fits right. I then use a jigsaw to cut a small notch at a right angle in each frame piece to allow it to sit on top of the structure evenly. I next attached all three pieces of the frame together with an additional piece of wood going across at the top. This will help give them extra strength during heavy winds. Now when you're attaching the roof onto the main structure, you might find that some of your cuts here, your notches, might not exactly be even. You can always put some shims in there to make that work and next thing is to secure everything up. I then just use some additional screws to secure the frame in place. Now that I got the roof frame secured, I'm going to use, this is uh, some corrugated plastic I had from a previous project that I took apart and it's just going to fit right on top and secure in place probably either with some screws or some staples, either way. Um, it already has some holes already in it. I'm not trying to make this perfect, I'm just trying to keep the majority of the water off of the wood that will be under it. Uh, if by chance you're going to have this out in the weather a lot more than I'm going to be having it, then I suggest probably using a little bit better piece of plastic or maybe even a sheet of wood with some uh, shingles or something on top to keep the wood from uh, water from running into your wood. Let's get that done. So to keep this simple, I just grabbed my electric stapler and added several up and down each rail. And it was finally time to take the wood storage rack from my workshop out to its new home under the carport. And my faithful companion came to watch me load up the new rack while he rested in a pile of leaves. One of the best features of this rack is the ability to store larger pieces of wood on the bottom and smaller, lighter pieces on top. This will also make it much easier to pick through the wood in the future when preparing a fire. Now if you enjoyed this project, make sure you click the like button. Tell me what you think about it in the comments. I also have some other projects right over here that you might be interested, so make sure you check those out. Otherwise, have fun building.